In the Bible, God is the I am, Emmanuel, God dwelling among us. In Isaiah chapter 7, we see in verse 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. In Matthew 1, in the first chapter, we see how Jesus was born. As Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Joseph did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he was going to decide to break the engagement quietly. But an angel came to him and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And then the scripture goes on to say this, all of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet, behold, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And because of this dream, he did as the angel commanded, and he took Mary as his wife, and Joseph named him Jesus. We see not just through this story that God was always planning to come as Emmanuel, God among us, but that he proves that he is still the God among us in so many ways. In the woman at the well, in John chapter 4, Jesus is on his way from Judea to Galilee. And there's a woman of Samaria at a well who's gone to get water. And Jesus wants water as well. And he says to her, give me a drink. And she responds to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, Ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman, because Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. But Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would give you living water. And she was confused by this. And she's like, but you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? And Jesus answers her and says, whoever drinks of this water pointing to the well, will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never thirst. The water I give him will become in him a fountain of water, springing up into everlasting life. Now this life that he speaks of here is a life that is called Zoe life. It's the word, the word in Greek that's used here is Zoe, and it means life that only comes from God, that's given by the spirit, by the pneuma or the wind. It means real, authentic God life. So this is what he's offering her in this exchange, and she wants it. So she says, sir, give me this water that I may never thirst nor come here to draw. And he, knowing her background by the spirit, says, go, call your husband and come here. And she says, I have no husband. And he says, you've well said I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one with whom you are now is not your husband. This you've spoken truly. And she says, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. And they continue on in this exchange. And in this exchange, they start talking about a day when worship is going to be coming on a mountain nearby, in spirit and in truth. And she also starts talking about Messiah, knowing that Messiah is coming. And Jesus so beautifully reveals to this woman, a sinner, for the very first time, I am he, meaning he is the Messiah. He reveals to this woman at the well for the first time that he is Messiah. And as a result of this exchange, she goes back and she tells the people in the village that she'd met this man and that he had told her everything she had ever done. And several people, thousands, ended up coming to know who Jesus was, the whole village. Jesus came as the Son of God to be our Savior. He lived on the earth and dwelt among the people of the time to show them the way to the Father. And then God saw to it that his life was recorded in the Bible so that we would know the way to the Father. Now, Jesus is not just the God who shows up in the Bible. He shows up in everyday, ordinary circumstances of normal people. So I have a friend, and he was in his 50s at the time that this next story happened. He had been ministering in Africa, and he'd been praying for healing and saw 